Arlene Foster, in your statement, you described Theresa May as dutiful. It's hardly a ringing endorsement of her premiership. Well, I don't think it's any secret that we had our differences, particularly over Brexit, but I have never doubted uh, Theresa May's sincerity or indeed her sense of duty to do what she felt was right for the nation. She was quite selfless in all of that, and I think it's right to acknowledge that today. The party leader is going, but there's no indication that the withdrawal agreement is going. So what does this actually change? Well, I think now that we are uh, going to see a leadership campaign, we will therefore listen very carefully to what each of the contenders have to say about Brexit, in particular from our perspective, in and around the Brexit debate and the backstop. We want to hear what people have to say about the backstop, and we'll be listening to that very carefully. So I think it's fair to speculate that you'll be hoping a Eurosceptic, perhaps Boris Johnson, who spoke at your own party conference, will be elected party leader. Well, I think it's important that whoever becomes uh, the leader of the Tory party and, by uh, dint of that, the new Prime Minister, believes in delivering on the referendum result uh, and therefore believes in the union. Uh, as we've said recently, we need to defend the union and to deliver Brexit. That's what we want to see happening from our new Prime Minister. And as I say, we'll be listening very carefully to what's been said by each of the contenders in relation to that. Given that your party props up the Tory government of Westminster, if they were to elect a leader not to your liking, does that make that government untenable? Well, look, uh, the confidence and supply agreement has been our, between ourselves and the Conservative Party. It has never been a case that it's been between the two leaders, as it were, or indeed even between the two chief whips. It's between our two parties. So what we want to see delivered is national stability, of course, but also to deliver on Brexit, to deliver on that referendum, and there, by doing that, to respect democracy and what has happened uh, through the referendum. And the timing's quite interesting for you. There looks like there'll be a new party leader in, in June. Confidence and supply also up for review in June. Will you be the first person through the, the new Prime Minister's door? Well, we'll obviously want to talk about confidence and supply. That was uh, due to be looked at, obviously, before the next Queen's speech, so we'll want to look at that, what we can deliver for Northern Ireland. Again, as you know, we would we delivered for Northern Ireland through the last confidence and supply agreement, and I do pay tribute to Theresa May for recognising the extra needs of Northern Ireland at that time and allowing us to deliver in the way that we've been able to do. I suspect you spent, this is one final question, I suspect you spent more time in the company of a British Prime Minister than any DUP leader before you because of the confidence and supply agreement. How will you remember and how do you think Theresa May's time as Prime Minister will be defined? Well, you know, I have always had the grace of respect for Theresa May. I've never, as I've said, doubted her sincerity and her desire to do, uh, in her mind, what was right uh, for the nation. Of course, we disagreed, uh, particularly over the backstop, but that doesn't mean that I don't have respect for the way in which she has conducted herself. She's always been courteous, she's always been respectful, and I hope that she would say the same about